Here we are in the homeland. It is winter, and it will be spring again. We have known other winters and survived them. This from naturalist Hal Borland, 1900 to 1978. Good morning, everyone. I'm Rob McCall. This is the Awanajo Almanac, devoted to feeling at home in nature and breaking down the wall of hostility between us and the rest of creation. This is the Almanac for January 30th to February 6th, 2015, the full snow moon. So, natural events for this quarter moon. Groundhog Day is February 2nd, marking the traditional midpoint of winter when you should still have half your wood and half your hay. After an open December and January, we're finally getting a full dose of winter, at least here along the coast. The recent blizzard left two to two and a half feet of soft powder blown into beautiful sculpted shapes by the gale force winds that brought it. The Old Farmer's Almanac predicted colder than average temperatures with less snow than usual for this winter. Well, they got the first part right, and we'll see how they do with the rest. One of the beauties of soft snow is reading the signatures the creatures leave behind in their daily travels. In a short walk, one can see the evidence of many kinds of creatures, deer tracks visiting the gardens, the orchards, and the compost, bird tracks every which way, also trails of tiny wild mammals, some of our closest relatives in these parts, pine mice, meadow mice, shrews, and voles. Some tracks show only the mark of a little round body plopping into the snow with a thin line of a naked tail behind. Do, and others show the small front feet followed by the longer back feet, like tiny rabbit tracks. Due to their tiny body mass, these mini mammals need mega food to survive in the bitter cold. And we may see a hint of desperation in their meandering trails punctuating the pallid page of winter. What food can they possibly find during these dreadful days? Meanwhile, we gladly return to a warm house and a hot meal, remembering our tiny, struggling, but stronger cousins. A mouse is miracle enough, wrote Walt Whitman, to stagger sextillions of infidels. Well, the weatherman gets all worked up about how cold it's going to be, taking some of the fun out of it for us. So knowing that it's easy to get confused about how cold it really is, what with Fahrenheit and centigrade and Kelvin and Celsius and wind chill factor and so forth. We offer again, as we usually do in midwinter, the following main winter temperature conversion table, adapted from various sources, all of them reputable, we hope. It begins at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. At this temperature, distilled water freezes and Moosehead Lake begins to drop from its high of 33 degrees last summer. At 20 degrees Fahrenheit, Alabamans don long johns, coats, boots, gloves, and hats if they have them, and Mainers slip flannel shirts over their tees but don't button them yet. At zero degrees Fahrenheit, Floridians start freezing to death, and Mainers close their storm windows. At minus 10 Fahrenheit, Masses of Californians climb over the wall to get into Mexico, and Maine Girl Scouts sell cookies door to door. At minus 25 Fahrenheit, Las Vegas shatters into tiny glittering shards, and Mainers rummage around the closet for their winter coats. At minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, Washington, D.C. runs out of hot air, finally, and Mainers let the dog sleep indoors. At minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit, antifreeze freezes and must be eaten with a spoon. At minus 460 degrees Fahrenheit, absolute zero, most molecular motion stops. And Mainers, meeting at the post office, starts saying, cold enough for you? At minus 500 degrees Fahrenheit, hell freezes over. The poor and the middle class get a taxpayer bailout while the rich have to bail themselves out and Mainers eat tofu. 
And finally, a couple of seed pods for you to carry around with you. The first from Ralph Waldo Emerson, the sage of Concord. The inhabitants of cities suppose that the country landscape is pleasant only half the year. I please myself with observing the graces of the winter scenery. To the attentive eye, each moment of the year has its own beauty, and in the same field it beholds every hour a picture which has never been before and shall never be seen again. And from the Manor, cold enough for you? That's the almanac for this quarter moon, but don't take it from me. Go out and see for yourself.